Hey, welcome to Pat Soundbites IGTV. Keeping new music alive is what I do on the radio and now on video. Conducting live chats with the artists and learning the story behind their latest release and also playing their new video. Special thanks to my good friend, Mr. Dave Hill with Tenacity PR, who scheduled and coordinated today's guest. Tenacity PR, publicity by Perseverance. Contact Dave Hill, his phone number, 440-7951-679666, or by email at tenacitycitymusicpr at gmail.com. Special thanks today to my sponsor, GoGo Tuners. For all guitar players looking for a focus on ease of use, readability, durability, and accuracy, look no further. The GoGo Tuner is the choice of many touring professionals and a favorite of casual players. GoGo Signature Green Your In and Red Your Out Screen makes tuning quick and easy. For more information, go to the website at gogotuners.com. Special thanks to WBXO Classic Rock Radio Redefine, allowing me to keep new music alive on the radio airways on the Pat Show every Sunday from 5 to 8 Eastern Standard Time. Only on WBXO Classic Rock Redefined. And a big thank you to Mr. Evan Balzer for allowing me to use his amazing instrumental that you're hearing right now. It's called Trails. To find out more incredible music by Evan, go to his website at evanbolzer.com. Today's guest from the UK, Rockers Little Red Kings. We'll be talking with the bandmates. We'll be promoting their latest album, The Magic Show Part 1. We'll be playing their single and the video called Harry's Town, plus a whole lot more fun, right here on Pat's Soundbites IGTV. Hey, live on Pat's Soundbites IGTV in New York, what the incredible, and I'm meeting the incredible Little Red Kings rockers out of the UK. We got Jason. We got Dougie. We got Ben. We got Craig. We're missing Harry. Okay, it's a drummer. We'll let him slide. Gentlemen, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A no, pleasure. thank you. A pleasure. Hey, the Little Red Kings, I, I don't know. I've been a fan since Dave Hill said, you got to listen to these guys. And I started, thank God for YouTube, because I started and I just couldn't get enough. And we're really pushing um, the Magic Show Part 1, which officially came out on May 29th. It's on all digital platforms. And I got a little taste of that with Harry's Town. But then I went right back to this Callus album that I can't stop listening to. <laughs> so if you love the 70s, if you love a little Aerosmith, a little Tom Petty, a little Led Zeppelin, a little Black Crows, a little Bad Company, maybe a little Blue. There's a country song in, uh, there's one of you guys that did a country song. I got a little like Bruce Springsteen thing. I don't know if it was almost over or one of them, but it was, uh, you guys cover it, man. So congratulations. Thanks for your time. I'll calm the shit. I'll calm down. <laughs> I'm only drinking water. <laughs> What's going on, Jason? The Go Pen Studios. You can't get out of that pen, can you? No, no, I'm in here now. Yeah, I'm exhausted after your intro. <laughs> <laughs> I know you wait. You wait for Jimmy Page to walk in the door, right? Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, I'm um, in the studio again, just doing some bits and bobs today because it's a pretty miserable day outside. So, um, thought I'd come in today and do some things, and then uh, get straight on with the interview with you. You know, so yeah, it's a good day. Excellent. Dougie, what's going on, my man? Another guy with that great guitar riffs on all these songs. How long have you guys been together, Doug, as a as a band with this little Red King thing going on? Um, from sort of start to finish, uh, the band's been going about five years now. Um, but in this uh, this form, you know, you, you have members go and come and go. Um, it's coming up for it'll be two years in September, I think. Uh, Craig was the, the most recent 
uh, acquisition. Um, but, it cost uh, a lot of money. Yeah. They charge a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, we, we had we had to bring him over from Ireland. There was all sorts of tax <laughs> issues. Um, but yeah, that'll be, that'll be, that'll but be he's two drinking years. Corona. He's not even drinking Guinness. He's, he's, you're getting off light. <laughs> Yeah, I think we got. I think we got a broken one because he doesn't play rugby either. So I'm not entirely sure what that sort of Irish we got. But, uh, yeah. He's good at piano and he's good at songwriting and singing. So that's that's all we want. Well, he's excellent at on the keys, and he's. Ex I don't know about the songwriting part. You guys will share that with me. But I watch enough of your videos, and I see Craig in there. It's, I think Craig, you got a Hammond too. Do you play with a Hammond at times on some of the tracks? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, the Hammond organ signed on my keyboard. Yeah, that that fits in real nice. Talk to me, Craig, about the songwriting with this Jason and Doug and this Ben guy. How is this? Uh, how's this chemistry fit? I mean, these songs are incredible. Yeah, I think it all kind of starts with a riff and, and I'll play something or Doug will play something and, and we'll work it through and we spend an evening working on a song and, and then Jason will take away the music and, and write the words and the melody and then we'll come back again and we'll do a little bit more and, and say, all right, it's working really well, working all together doing it. Sometimes I mean, that, as, doesn't as, quite, that doesn't quite work, but with us, it seems to work really well. As a group, and I'm sure you've all played in different bands. Ben, the bass guy here, Mr. Ben, I want to say Beach, right? Ben Beach? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Ben, I, I'm sure you've all played in different bands before, but did you, did you guys get that? There's something special about this group. I mean, A, I think it's really cool that you got a studio to play in and practice and do whatever you got to do right down the street or at, at, at Jason's place. But what's what do you get when you play with these guys and go, you know, whether it's Harry's Town or one of my favorites is Lose the Light. I just saying to Jason before you came on, if you don't push that as another single, I'm going to be playing it. But um, <laughs> what, what do you get out of this, Jay? Uh, what do you get out of this, Ben? What, what's, the, Not, what's the chemistry here with these? Uh, fine I don't really gentlemen? get a lot out of it, to be honest, Pete. Apart, sorry. <laughs> 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 sorry. Uh, right, good, good start. Um, yeah, no, it's... it's um, yeah, well, that's some <laughs> rubbish questions. Um, get a lot of it, I suppose. Friendship was a good one. Um, but yeah, just um, getting out there and playing music and getting people to listen to our stuff is um, really great. I say, and it's one thing I think we've definitely all been missing uh, for these last few months um, is getting out there and playing. Uh, and especially sort of as we were meant to be releasing the album um, in the last sort of month um, and sort of doing some gigs and running up to that. It's, it's a being a shame not being able to do that but um yeah it's great being with these guys and i, I say it's um it's sort of this album's been a really great to get out there and it's, it's got some great tracks on there i always I, say it's always the follow-up you know i fell in love with callus and now you guys are crushing it with magic show part one so there's certainly something there and the, and the follow-up on what you were saying ben and talking to a lot of artists you guys are not the first ones to put something out and then we hit this roadblock of this coronavirus and this lockdown. And I've been telling people, you know, it's like a kind of a double-edged sword. I know you want to go out there and play the live music. But on the other hand, people are home. And, you know, if we were back to normal and I didn't catch a video or didn't know Dave, I hate to tell you, I don't know how many people would even hear about you guys. So, yeah, it sucked because I'm going to ask you the next question I'll ask. I've already talked to Jason already, but I'll skip a little bit of him. But I'll ask Doug, your first thoughts getting in front of a live audience again. I mean, I sit here looking at my pictures of all artists and going, I can't even remember my last live concert. I want to say maybe it was Sons of Apollo in New York City in February. But your first thoughts, Doug, get in front of a live audience again. I mean, going, is this – I'm back. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that one's going to be – I, I can't wait. I, yeah, it's going to be mental. Um, I think that there's going to be a level of, of excitement. And, and if it is that first weekend that everybody's allowed back out, that's going to be rammed uh, no matter where it is. There's possibility that it's going to be at one of our sort of regular places, locals for the, the belayed album launch. Uh, and that's a, that's a lovely venue near, near, actually near myself. So I can stagger home. So yeah, I'm, I'm going all out. I can't wait. <laughs> Uh, but that's that's the Stamford Arms in in Lower Stoss near ourselves, and and I I don't think you know I can't wait I I really yeah I'm missing it there, There's nothing better than a live performance, and like I said, watching you guys 
with that video from that that live venue it really shows your true colors compared to your other tracks but i i applaud you guys for putting out the video because as i said to jason when i spoke with him for my podcast was the fact that anybody could put out a new song but without the video the video could go viral tomorrow and nobody would have still you know putting out a song going hey this is little red kings and people go yeah okay but putting out that video i think is so important and you guys got that knack because I seen you guys beating the crap out of each other in a dungeon. I seen you on a scooter race in some town. I don't know. <laughs> it was chaperone. No, that was the car. You guys are on. And then you had a scooter race. Was that lose the light? I, I forget. I'm like, dude. <laughs> I don't even know who won the scooter race. It was pretty funny though. <laughs> that, that was said to me, Pat. That was what? I'm sorry, Jason. Said, say it. Said to me. Said to uh, me. Oh, said to me. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, I see the scooter race. People are looking at yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, it's great fun. That was a just, good. That was uh, good. Just, um, just after uh, this Zoom chat at about seven o'clock tonight, Pat, um, we're putting out a, a live video of Lose the Light. Yeah. Well, we I'm gonna another, have to. Um, lock, we did another lockdown video where we all recorded individually, you know, listening to the drum track and and then put them all together. So that that will go up um, in about sort of uh, forty five minutes. So. Yeah. I love it. Well, I'm going to be the first one. Once I get that, I'll play it here in the states and get that out there on my on my uh, social on my social media. Um, you guys, have you been doing any? Did you ever think of doing Jason any um, online live streaming? Have yeah, you um, yeah, I did some. I did some uh, some solo ones because it's sort of logistically quite difficult to do a full band one it, it's, it's quite tricky but i've done maybe half a dozen um live streams i did some acoustic ones and then i did some electric ones and sort of played all the old back catalog and the new album and i have to say they were you know they were really popular really successful i think people just needed that l live music and the the figures we got were really good and um, yeah I, I sort of got to enjoy them after after the first couple because they're a really strange thing to do sitting here on my own uh, looking at an it. ipad right go thank you yeah. very much and we'll take exactly. money and tips and yeah <laughs> and make more money <laughs> I, yeah i've warmed to the idea and um yeah i suppose i've maybe done six or seven of them um but i haven't done one for a couple of weeks now so maybe due to do another one but yeah okay cool did you guys have, hey doug did you have any goals set did you meet your goals and expectations with the magic show or maybe bring it back to callus was that your debut album, Callus? Was, was there one before that? Yes, there was a self-titled debut album um, before that, uh, and and that that there was a, then a long gap between that and Callus um, for a number of reasons: member changes, bits and pieces. Of course, actually, Goat Pen Studios wasn't overly a thing at that point, so we didn't have the opportunity that we have now to just go in and record, uh, and then Callus. It was kind of we've been we've been chugging away at gigging and stuff for three or four years, and um, especially Jason and I kind of went in the studio and went, you know what, this is it, we're done, we're doing what we want to for this album, and then after that, I'm never going to see you again, <laughs> <laughs> unless on a scooter, <laughs> unless on a scooter. And so, of course, Callus it meant that we we really did just do what we wanted, and I don't think we expected it to get the uh, sort of. The, the um the reaction that it did and kind of put us up here and then it was like okay we should probably do some more um, <laughs> let me call jason back i'll take everything back <laughs> let's do this again oh i didn't say anything it was all him um <laughs> and then uh but i think the magic show part one for, for us very much we, we very quickly sat down uh, at the beginning of, of the writing process um and said we want to make hits. I think without sounding like we're going to sell out, we said we're going to do three thirty, and we're going to see. We've done the massive monolithic sort of concept album. Now we're going to we're going to go the other way, and I think we succeeded in in showing that we have that ability because of course some people can't write short songs, some people can't write long songs, and I think we kind of pained over the process of of trimming the fat, as you would say, and. Personally, it's the first album that I've ever listened to on the day of release and not hated immediately. So really? for me, I've, I, I've uh, yeah, I, I've got a really bad habit, yeah, of, of hating everything I've ever done. So for me, personal was was great. 
Um, I well, take it from me. Don't hate it because it's you guys got some really good stuff going on, dude. And maybe you're a perfectionist, and I get that, but take all all of it in, dog. It's all good. Somebody give that guy a hug. Give, <laughs> Craig, get it. Craig, go to his house and get him a get him a Corona. There you go. Thank you, Craig. Excellent. <laughs> Ben, what do you think? Uh, did you meet your the expectations of uh, Callis and uh, the Magic Show? I mean, uh, oh, what are yeah, you going to do when you become famous and come to the States and uh, they think the Beatles landed again and uh, all these <laughs> people are chasing you down? Yeah, no, it definitely has um, really uh, sort of met my expectations as well. Um, it's it's a great album. I say we've done some great work on there and it's a uh, it's, it's, um, really, good, really good album. Um, yeah, what to do in the States, see the sights. Don't know, I've never been, so um, Jason's been before, but um, I think he can probably show me some places, maybe Vegas. Oh, <laughs> hey, it's a ching, it's a ching. <laughs> well, I got it, you know, as I said to Jason when I talked to him weeks ago, was the thing that caught my eye was a lot of the songs were not, you know, just, I'm done with the genre, even though our tagline is classic rock redefined. All bets are off. I love to hear blues rock. I love to hear rock. I love to hear rhythm and blues. I like to hear funk. I think there's a lot. And Harry's Town starts with the piano with Greg. Uh, Craig, and then it, uh, Greg, Craig, Greg. And then it gets into a groove and a funk. And I mean, I just like all of that. It doesn't have to, you don't have to be like lined up into this, you know, you're this. Do you get a lot of, um? are you getting a lot of airplay in the UK? under certain genres or does it matter out there jason i'll ask you yeah um we we put we we get put in the genre of of rock which is a huge genre but what we often uh, get put in is the genre of hard rock which you know we are not um i mean I always see us as a kind of a rock and roll band rather than as a rock band so we we do get put in the genre of hard rock and some of the bands we play with and buddy up with are often hard rock but you know that's that's really not our thing at all. I mean, you've you've heard the new album. It's it's very far from hard rock. Um, so I don't know. I just I see us as a kind of a, a, a rock and roll band. But I think there's commercial sides to it, which means that we could just we could you know get some sort of mainstream kind of um, play now and again with with what we do. But you know maybe um, we're, we're certainly not hard rock anyway. <laughs> Well, don't change anything. Do not. Keep writing the songs that you want to write. Keep doing what you're doing. I mean, it's coming across. I like a song where it's just like, even Harry said, it just starts out and then it just takes off. I want to say Chaperone was like that. Starts out real, like, da 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 and then boom, you guys take it to another level. I wrote, like, some of the notes, um, and I got notes all over the place, so I apologize for that. Um what was it uh, said to me? You know, I think it was, that was the scooter thing, the scooter video. And then, you know, it just changes and goes to a whole faster pace before the yeah. end of the song. And I dig all that compared to just the, okay, the chorus to this. You guys got great harmonies, Doug, Jason, and Craig, who's ever, who's ever singing. I mean, great harmonies, great hooks, all radio friendly. Um, I'm just itching to see you guys live. Maybe... I got to fly to the UK before you guys get over here. <laughs> I drink vodka. Not much of a beer guy. Gray Goose. I okay. sleep on the floor. I'm real cheap. <laughs> <laughs> How much of it? I'll, I'll go back to you, Ben. How much of, a, of an advantage it is to have that studio where Jason holds the fort there at the uh, goat pen where you can practice and exercise and you know do whatever you need to do? Uh, it's, it's huge oh yeah definitely um it is such an advantage for us because um yeah so we can get together and and sort of jam and practice whenever we want um and we can go to whatever hour we want and sort of in the night as well like in um callus and even during um the magic show we um sort of recording into the early hours um and some of the best stuff came out during that time um sort of we'll sort of rehearse it practice it jam it and then coming in the early hours and sort of everything, we just sort of laid down the best parts of the track during that time. Um, so it's really, really great to have that there. Um, and so it's a great place for us all to get, to get together. And so we have a great time down there and, and come out with some really good stuff. I'm not a musician. And I always, I always say to the, whoever I'm chatting to, 
the, because of technology, some folks are got you know band, members in the UK, some are in California, some are in New York, and they're taking advantage of sending these WAV files out. And I think you would miss that magic. Am I right, Craig? With yeah, with, with that, you guys are together like old school. And Dougie says, let's try this, or Ben says, let's do that, or let's fast tempo it. I think you you know the chances of missing that extra magic when you guys are all in a room together would be too important to me as if I was a musician. I mean, it's great that you can send the files back and forth, but yeah. I, I miss that networking, you know? It's like taking an online college class when there's nobody in the room, you're like, it's boring. Yeah. I want to hear everybody's idea and what they're thinking. So go ahead, sir. Uh, we, we record um, the whole evening so that while we're playing and coming up with ideas and, and, and suddenly somebody goes, oh, what was that? Ooh, that, that, that was really cool. What, what was that? And you go, oh, I can't remember. I can't remember. Well, I can't remember. Um, and we're able to go back and then play it back and go, ah, that's what we did and then work on it. So it's um, being together because we, we are all friends. It, 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 it's a very good atmosphere to um, to write and, and, and record, obviously, in the goat pen. It's, it's, um, yeah, it's pretty perfect. Yeah, definitely. Outstanding. All right, let's play a little Harry's Town here. Let me bring up the Please. video. What's that? Yay. <laughs> we, we, you know, Yay. Woo. Harry's Town. <laughs> All right, where is my man Harry's Town here? Let's share this. Let's go to this. Don't mind me. Hit the share button. That'll help. There he is. There you are. That's Yay. at the beginning. <laughs> and let's hit the button there we go so this is the lockdown this is you guys are not together but you all put it together oh, right compared to the due to the, the virus yes what's with the crown there jason i mean you're getting me nervous here i know the i know the queen is uh the Queen is the Majesty in the UK, but uh, were you celebrating your daughter's <laughs> birthday, is. or what was this about? Uh, I don't know if you can see me now. I've lost my video feed, but uh, yeah, I've got it on now. It's just um, it's a little tiara I found. <laughs> I just thought it looked. Fun. <laughs> I wanted to feel pretty, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Tell me about Harry Sound. Is it? I mean, what's the concept of it? Is it a? Is it uh, Harry, your drummer's actual? Town or what, what's it all about there? Any of you guys can uh, pick up. Well, it's a fictional. It's a fictional town um, that I, I invented in my head that was um, specially built for our drummer Harry. He's, he's a the, he's a different sort of character, um, and um, so I just uh, I just thought I'd kind of uh, invent a fictional town where everyone could go out, have fun, and uh, and just enjoy being Harry for the night. You know, and see what that was like because. Uh, you know, I'd quite like to be uh, Harry just for one night, just to see what that was like. <laughs> <laughs> just for the one night? Yeah, just for one night. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, we, uh, you know, you, we could do some hard drugs, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Still one can come there. No, it came out really well. I mean, how many takes did it? You guys just did one take and then you sent it to a... a, a yeah, a, yeah. One video time. person and just go from there yeah that, that is it we just literally did um one take uh, the, the drummer put his drums down and we just we just did it so it's kind of warts and all you know uh, i think i think i sang the words wrong in this one I, but no one noticed um <laughs> <laughs> no one noticed <laughs> you know, there's a couple of couple of bits but it's, it's best to just put it down otherwise you know yeah. you could just paint over the pain over it uh, too much so it we said it was going to be live these lockdown sessions and and they are live yeah and, uh, just, sorry. go ahead sir no i was just going to say in relation to the uh, the video person the video person was craig yeah oh, craig, okay craig put it all together so we filmed it and then uh, yeah he, he did all the jay and he did the hard work we did the easy bit and i just made it look good <laughs> yeah, I <did> video. <laughs> Doug, video. Dougie, what am I missing with this uh, whole Harry's Town and uh, this group here? What questions have should I be asking and I haven't asked? I'm not entirely sure that the most common one, of course, is what is it about? And, and the easy one is um, Harry the drummer. Um, 
But uh, this was certainly, um, this was the first song that we sat down in a room together and said we're going to write a hit. This this was the starting of the process. Is I want to say it was the four of us. Um, I think ironically, actually, Harry was away for the penning of Harry's Town. Um, but uh, we, we th this this was the start of the Magic Show Part One, I guess. Um, although there had been a couple of others that were in circulation, like uh, Almost Over and Peppermint. Um, this was the first one that we sat down as a, as a group or as a four and said, we're going to write a track for the album and it's going to be a hit. So yeah. I'm yeah. We're not saying we're not saying we succeeded in writing a hit. <laughs> but, well, I guess we are. I, I yeah, think Pat, I, Pat loves it. I think yeah, Pat loves flat. it. I don't know. I don't know why this popped up here or what I hit. Great. Uh, Pat finished. So. All right, come on, get out of there, get out of there. There you go, secrecy, Doug again. Yeah, I think it's a hit. I mean, I I I love the attitude, Dougie. You can say, look, let's do it. I don't care what it takes. We can be here all night. Let's get some Corona. Tell the wife I'll get home when I get home, and let's do it. And, um, you know, well, let me ask you, Ben, what's the ingredients to put a, a great hit together? What's the, what's the ingredients to put the Harry's Town, the Chaperone, the Lose, the uh, where's my other favorite? I mean, I got notes all over the place. Send to me. It's, um, it's all in the base, Pat. Oh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Well, yeah, you gotta and you gotta protect Harry. I mean, it's all about the rhythm, right? The rhythm. Oh yeah, yeah, complete the rhythm section. Um, no, it's me. All about me. <laughs> Good answer. Without me, without me, that song wouldn't mean anything. That that's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so tell me about now that I'm so excited. Um, what's the plan for part two? What's the release? Ooh. Talk to me about part two, and we'll go from there. I mean, all the songs are already uh, pretty much done up. Ish. I mean, um, as I say, I spent the day in the studio today working on uh, a p piece of piano that Craig wrote. And I started today working on a melody and some, vo uh, some lyrics to that. So well, I think we've got an idea of, of, of the songs. They're just not finished. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, we've definitely got enough songs. They just need finishing. So and we kind of we want, want the two albums to kind of bind together and sort of be be a follow-on so that makes it a lot that makes it a lot more tricky we we kind of had this idea that we didn't just want it to be part one and part two we wanted it to be kind of entwined somehow uh, and a follow-on you know like a sequel or part two or you know some little easter eggs between the two songs that kind of ah. tie up that makes it a lot more tricky i mean we had we had some really big ideas where we where we wanted, you know, each song to match up with uh, with another song on part so two. It has a good flow. Has a very good yeah, flow. Yeah. <clears throat> Definitely want part one and two to sit together and be something that if you have one, you need the other. You know, yeah. that's yeah. Anybody else to follow up, Dougie? Um, not not really. From a personal point of view, the lockdown has been really good for me because I I don't think I've ever played this much guitar. Um. So writing, I've been sending songs out. Jason has been sending songs out, but you know that has really helped it in kind of the encapsulation process of part two. Uh, in terms of when we were hoping to release it under initial plans, um, that was October. Would we still aim for October yep. in the current situation? We're not sure, but um, certainly I would like at least it to be on its way to being finished in, in October. Um, but I think it's all going to very much depend on, on when we can get back out and playing, really. Uh, um, yeah. I, I, I guess, you, you know, we don't want to, you don't want to bring part two out before part one has run its course. Good point. But you don't want part one to be forgotten by the time part two comes out. So that's going to be quite a difficult balance for us to get. Uh, and I think in the meantime, it's, it's keeping up the content um like the live lockdown videos and mute videos and stuff from part one to keep people interested uh, i think that's going to be the real challenge over the next three or four months all about the timing keeping the momentum going and yeah. you're right <clears throat> you don't want to throw it out that quick because then you're like oh my god we're gonna get another one out so spacing yeah. you know things happen for a reason i believe there's no such thing as a coincidence i'm not a fan of this virus thing and the lockdown but as i said a lot of positive as i said double-edged sword Maybe nobody would even know you guys 
you know, yeah. if it wasn't for the videos and more people listening, looking for that new music. I got to yeah. tell you, I hope maybe someday add on your business plan that you record a live show. And if it's in your local town of the UK, you know, in Norfolk or even in the States, I think it would be amazing because that's what it really, the, I, in my opinion, and what the hell do I know? A fish guy. I, you see the real, you see the real energy of the band, you know, and that's what caught my attention when I saw said to me and peppermint and you know, that, that whole, I said, whoa, 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 who is this? Wait a minute here. <laughs> All very good. I mean, you guys. So, when things go forward, is there is I'm sure there is a plan for touring. Is there a thought of coming to the states or just hitting Europe or where? What's the direction for the live shows? Is it up to your management or you guys or how does that well, work, Jason? Yeah, uh, we we don't have management at this point. Yeah, um, you got. I'll sign right now. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> a water, so, a beer, whatever it takes. I got it. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. I'm sorry. Yeah, he, no, no, he's like just popped. Yeah. <laughs> David Hill, sorry, Dave. I got this. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jason. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we we don't have management at this point, um, and so we we make all our own decisions and we we fumble our way through and uh, and as i said in in the last interview we sort of do it all diy and that and that has um, some some upsides to that but also some downsides because we make a lot of mistakes um but um yeah we don't we don't know what we're going to be doing next um when the lockdown is over and we'll be gigging again we'll just be sort of sticking our toe out again and trying to get as many shows and gigs as we can but uh, we certainly don't have any plans for uh touring the states or Europe yet, you know, so. <laughs> no, 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 no. My wife isn't home from work yet, so I can go to the UK because that's on my bucket list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. I can do a live, re I can do a live remote show from the UK. That's all good. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> if there was somebody, Ben, that you would want to open for, what band or artist would that be? Wow. Ooh. Blimey, that's a big question. Um... Well, one of my favorite bands out of the States um, at the moment, I suppose it's not really in our genre, is Incubus, but um, I doubt they'll, uh, well, uh, they might let us. Um, hey, don't ever, don't ever say <laughs> no. Don't ever. No, no. Never heard of them, Ben. Never heard of them. Um, You've heard of the bass player. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I might have mentioned his name before. Um, but yeah, no, uh, sort of American bands, and I've been listening to recently. Um, a band are probably sick of me saying that is Orleans and uh, America. I'm really into them at the moment. Um, really, two great bands. Vocals are amazing on on those on those records. They're amazing. These bands, those are uh, from the seventies, Ben. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Mr. Mr. Stevenson yelled out "You can't, you too" before we even got the words out. <laughs> Did I hear that? <laughs> Did I hear that correctly? Of course, <laughs> of course. Yeah. I got I got to finally see you two a couple of years ago. Oh my goodness! I don't know what I was waiting for. Like the Stones, I finally I finally got to see the Stones last year. Wow. In, uh, in uh, on my bucket list for a hundred years. I mean, uh, the U the, not the UK Ireland there, Craig. Um, Rory Gallagher comes to mind. Thin Lizzy comes to mind. I've had the pleasure of meeting Vivian Campbell, uh, Def Leppard. And uh, last in line, and love to talk to Viv about some of the music in the uh, in Ireland, and uh, that's another one on a bucket list. I don't know if my liver and kidneys can handle it, but <laughs> I'm gonna give it a whirl. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it'd be a great experience. Go to Ireland; it's beautiful. Dougie, who would you want to open for, or who should I say should open for you? <laughs> um, over in the states. Um, no, no, it doesn't have to be in the states. Oh, it can be not anywhere. in the states. No, it can be oh, okay. Anywhere. Um, oh, yeah, uh, people sort of like ourselves, people like Black, Blackberry Smoke, um, ah, very good, Amplete. um, my personal thing is if I can be anywhere near the lineup of Biffy Clyro, then I'm, I'm, I'll retire at that point. That's my big one. No, you can't retire yet. No, no, retire. not retired yet, but you get um, there. Yeah, they, they, they would probably be sort of the big three, uh, for me personally. 
Um, and then, of course, uh, we've actually got some friends over in Nashville. I'd love to gig with them again. Um, that's Ida May, just because we really got on with them. But um, and, and great band. It'd be great to, to gig with them again. Um, but uh, yeah, they will probably be sort of first four off the top of my head. There you go, Jason. Uh, I should have spent this I got time. this worst whole lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> I should have spent the time thinking, but um, uh, yeah, I guess um, alive or, or dead. I guess they have to be alive, really, don't they? Well, I would hope they are. There are just so many, so many, um, so many that would be appropriate, and so many that wouldn't be appropriate. But uh, right now, um, I'm listening to uh, a little band, or it's, I think it's just a solo guy now. I think he's got a band. There's a band called Field Report, and we'd be a terrible band to play with him because we are nothing like them. But um, I really like what what he's doing at the moment. So there's a band called Field Report. It is an American band, but we are we are very little like them. So it'd be horrific. So I'll say something like um, Greta Van Fleet. If that makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> I say no. To, I mean, I I like them. And I like what they're doing, and they're young guys, and they got that they got that Rocky Blues. Um, the the lead singer sounds like a Robert Plant. He's a real young kid, and I get that. I see you guys with the Black Crows. I yeah. see yeah. you guys. That would be like boom. I like Dougie's uh, answer before uh, Blackberry Smoke. I see that. Uh -huh. um, who else would fit really well? I don't want to say I don't know about Government Mule. More of a jam, yeah. but they would they'd be a pretty good fit for you, I think. Warren Haynes, yeah. you know, a bluesy kind of a bluesy rock, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, somewhere where you know why I mentioned like field reports because we go off on these odd tangents now and again with like weather, the storm, and that kind of thing. Um, so we um, we do go off on a weird tangent, so it would have to be something that's <laughs> acceptable of that. <laughs> Well, I've taken a ton of your time, guys, and I can't thank you enough. Before I let you go, if uh, I don't know who wants to do it or we go around the room to just thank, I'm doing a collage for, to thank all our first responders, not just here in the States, throughout the world that have uh, been fighting this thing. So we can hopefully get outside a little bit more and get to live performances. I think I said to Jason, in Denmark, they started doing drive-in movie theaters where the band would be on a stage out in a parking lot and people yeah. pull in their cars. They buy two spots, one for their car, one for the lawn chairs and their cooler and off to the races. I don't know about meet and greets anymore. They're trying to come up with, you know, all this creative ideas. Um, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But uh, we'll start with you, Dougie. Uh, any, any words of wisdom for the uh, first responders out there? just thank you for everything you've done you know that there's a reason that we are now able to go out to a degree and, and that's down to the the way in which you've kind of kept the country running i think um you know i i certainly wouldn't want to be in the hospitals and doctors and stuff at this point so you know thank you for doing that so that you know people like me don't have to it's, it's been amazing yeah i never heard of the word essential compared to non-essential but you know why everybody's essential. I mean, it doesn't matter what you do anymore. Craig? Uh, I guess just um, thank you for your sacrifice. Ben? Yeah, just echoing the words of uh, Doug and Craig. It's just, yeah, same thanks. It's um, amazing what everyone's doing at this time. And the band wouldn't be any but a band without the bass player. So we already got that <laughs> on the control. Yeah. <laughs> Jason? That's not true. Jace? Yeah. Yeah, much the same. I mean, we're just we're just simple musicians, pretty easy here, walled up in our little room. So yeah, I'd like to thank all those people, and I'll just uh, also say, like, you know, it's not over till it's over. So um, I know we're all itching to go jumping back out again, but um, you know, it's not over till it's over. So just be careful and let's let's take our time. I like that. I think, mm. sadly, as much as we like want to get out there. And I don't know if we're going to ever be back to one, the normal, whatever that could be. But I personally would like to wait for a vaccine, a vaccine before uh, I want to be mixed with folks. But I don't know. Yeah. Anybody yeah. takes a bite out of me, they're going to die anyway. So it's <laughs> 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 all right. We got to we got to do a shout out to Dave Hill. I got to can't yeah, thank Dave. Dave enough. 
Thank you, Dave. You guys got to buy Dave a beer because I got to, or whatever. (laughs) Maybe two. Yeah. (laughs) The the band is called Little Red Kings. The Magic Show Part 1 is already out May 29th on digital outlets. There will be The Magic Show Part 2. I encourage everybody to check these guys out. They're on, they got their website. They're on YouTube. They're on, they got a lot of YouTube, which is great. They're on Twitter. They're on Instagram. They're on Facebook. Gentlemen, I, 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 I'm, I'm flattered. I'm honored to be the first, and I hope I do you guys justice, and uh, I will do whatever it takes to uh, maybe even manage, um, do whatever it takes <laughs> to uh, keep keep your music alive there. Thank, thank, thank you. 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 Thank